Hello, I'm Lorna Jenkin and I am an avid knitter and I have been researching the old ways of knitting. There have been stories of the phenomenal speed that the old knitters could reach and just as many modern suggestions that that speed was, was fiction. How could anybody possibly knit 300, 200 stitches per minute? But these stories came from researchers who were not known for exaggeration. Mary Wright, in her book Cornish Guernseys and Knit Frocks, says The knitter would strike the loops faster than the eye could see. Experienced knitters achieved very high speeds of about 200 stitches a minute. And Marie Hartley and Joan Ingleby, in their book The Old Hand Knitters of the Get Dales, said Mrs Crabtree, who is 79, is one of the very few people who can still knit in the old way. This was in 1949-50. This indent is called swaving, meaning the up and down motion of the arms and body. We were shown how to do it, but it's not easy even to see the loops as they slipped from one needle to the other. Mrs Crabtree remembers that her mother could knit a jersey in a day. I'm going to show you a very short extract from a film, Visit the Crofters, made at the end of the Second World War in Shetland, showing aspects of life which have not changed for a couple of generations. This is long before oil was discovered and changed their way of life forever. We were channel hopping one day and we paused on the TV channel Talking Pictures and watched an old 1940s, 50s film on the glimpses of Shetland life. We watched sheep shearing or plucking called rowing followed by carding and spinning the wool on an old tiny Shetland wheel. Suddenly I was watching several women all knitting but at a phenomenal speed, in fact two or three stitches per second. Luckily I was able to record the programme the following week when it was repeated. This old black and white film was created by a British film company called Talking Pictures which discovers old and often forgotten films from the archives of the British um, film industry like Pinewood. The lovely people at Talking Pictures have given me permission to show you part of this film and to analyse their film to study the old ways of knitting. The rest of the film which I haven't shown you, to, which I won't show, be showing you, also shows crofters fishing for herring and making baskets. I have extracted the section on knitting and I will show it to you soon. You'll see from the silent conversation of the two ladies in the middle that this film really is real-time speed. The original film was silent but had been given a musical and narrative accompaniment that did not add anything of knitting interest. The film is black and white and very low resolution. The light is poor for the indoor scenes, so seeing detail is not easy. Here it is.
I decided to look in great detail at the knitter at the start of the film, who is just starting a new row. Here I have slowed the film to one eighth of its original speed. Then you can see the individual hand movements of each stitch. What you cannot see very well is the way the completed knitted work is traditionally wrapped with a string and tied to the knitter's waist. This next knitter is making a narrow band of lace and right at the start you can see at running at quarter speed you may just glimpse that her knitting is pulled out at a tension. The connection to her waist gives a tension allowing the old row of stitches to be stretched out and it's therefore easier to enter to make the new stitches. The string is moved or adjusted every few rows to maintain that firm tension. And the string also holds the work safe when you have to let go to stir the pot. The ball of wool is also tied to the waist to give an easy pull. Watch again the lady walking across the grass and I'm running this at half speed so you can see her actions. You will see that the, lady, the yarn was pulled out from the centre of course to avoid the ball spinning into a tangle and the yarn ball is fastened to the waistband usually by a little hook. This lady, by the way, is knitting at just over two stitches a second, even on rough grass. Interestingly, none of these knitters is using a knitting stick or a belt. You will see the knobs on the end of the needles here on the final indoor scene. Run at full speed. And please look at the lady, the first lady in the film because her speed is really something. Now have another look at the first woman in the indoor scene. I shall run this now at a quarter speed so you can work out her knitting speed. In the original, the camera settles on her for only three seconds. What do you reckon? That slow down fragment lasts about 23 seconds and she completes, I think, 14 stitches, making four stitches a second at full speed. Perhaps someone from Shetland can identify these ladies. Thank you for watching and I hope you've been as impressed and astounded as I was when I first saw this film. Do recall though that to reach these phenomenal speeds these women were first taught to knit as children and they were schooled in about this very fast style and they practiced and knitted every day. 
So as you can tell I'm much too old now to begin to work up to these speeds. Thank you for watching.